to the live stream today about real estate investing made simple. Hello, everybody. And we do live interviews with experts and leaders in the real estate investing world. And today you get the special guests. So you get me, Leanne Riley, and I have Eric Jensen here. Hey. And I'm a real estate coach and a broker. And I help ambitious, high performers build a personal roadmap to wealth with real estate investing through our proven profit formula system. I built a $14 million real estate portfolio in residential, multifamily, condo development, commercial, and vacation properties. In the Twin Cities, Minnesota, right here, I lead the Encore investment team of realtors. We're both part of it. So one more thing, check out my YouTube channel. There is a ton of education and these live streams are over there and it's just called Leanne Riley Real Estate. So when you're over there, subscribe. So today's topic, Eric and I are going to talk about strategic investing. So let me introduce Eric Jansen. You know, sometimes I say he's my right hand man because we work together and he does all the operations manager for the Proven Profit Formula. And that's a national coaching program. And hey, there is a lot of computer software data marketing things behind the scene that you don't even know. And Eric handles that. And he's a sophisticated investment property realtor on the Encore investment team. And uh, because we work with so many investors, you know, no deal is the same, is it? Never, never, ever. And sometimes you think I've been in the business this long, I should know most everything. We are always learning something new. It just, is and the market has a lot to do with it which we'll talk about today another thing about eric he is passionate about collaboration and that is part of how we work with investors he's really good at on smart decisions and you need a sharp realtor folks in this market or you're not going to win in multiple offers or if we're listing it it takes smarts these days to get it priced right and do the right things. There's a sequence, you guys, <laughs> to get it sold quickly. And he's also, um, he understands the urgency of this fast-paced market because it is fast-paced. We found a really good duplex deal, maybe on, I don't know, was that... Last week, Thursday or Friday, I think it was. And we put it out to some investors because these are special people that are on our list and working with us exclusively. And, you know, maybe they were snoozing. Maybe it was, you know, it was the middle of the afternoon on a rainy day or whatever. But, you know, by the time they got back to me and said, yeah, yeah, I want to look at it. I looked, it was pending. Mm -hmm. Good deals don't last. And We'll talk about how we find those. That's the other thing about Eric. He's good at digging up the deals. And that's important because sometimes realtors just throw you on a search. And that's the last you hear from them until you raise your hand and say, I want to go look at X house. Mm -hmm. We participate with you and collaborate to help you find the right house or to help you sell your house. And we're going to be honest and tell you what you need to do get it to sell so now we're gonna talk about the market and probably you're feeling uncertain about what the heck is going on around investing in today's market so we're good you know another thing about eric he's a data geek so I let them loose here on the mortgage rates and the interest and all that. And we're going to talk about that first. Okay. So I got a share screen here. So you guys, we got a PowerPoint. It's not going to be that long, but it's going to help you. You got to see the numbers and stats. Now, can somebody put in the chat box? I just want to be sure that you can see this screen. Can you see it? I don't know if they're seeing that screen. I think they're seeing. No, I think they're seeing this. Okay. You see strategic investing. Somebody put it in the chat and tell me. 
if it's... we just want to make sure because we've had it happen before where we were on the wrong screen and then we did a whole yeah meeting Can on the wrong screen powerpoint yes, yes perfect thank, thank you jerry thank you jerry okay here we go navigating the real estate market all right so this first slide so today was a big day today june 12th maybe you don't think it was a big day but it was a big day in the world of financing and inflation and the, the Fed met today, the Federal Reserve. Uh, so the first thing that happened this morning was the uh, consumer price index report came out for inflation. Um, at, this comes out once a month. It reports on the previous month's inflation. So it's year over year statistics. So this graph is showing the year over year statistics of how inflation has gone. You see the pretty big spike there around the 2022-2023 area there where it right spiked there. up. Um, you know, everybody's obviously uh, feeling that with, you know, going to the grocery store and, you know, anything you buy these days is, is, is a lot more expensive than it was several years ago. So the Federal Reserve has been doing what they can. And just to give you a little bit of history, if you don't know, they've been doing what they can to raise interest rates in order to curb the inflation. Uh, the goal then would be to raise unemployment rate a little bit to get people to then stop spending as much. And then prices would then start to fall because there'd be less demand um, on everything. So the Fed's uh, has more worked, as you can see in that graph that has come down. Um, it's kind of stayed the same here for a little while, but it's, it's um, at a better spot than it was a few years ago. So the report came out today, we we're at 3.3%, which the goal from the Fed is 2%, but the good news for that is it was 0.1% less than expected. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but everybody in that in that world gets excited about that. And if you looked at the stock market, you'll see that it, it's gone up a little bit today. If you looked at mortgage rates, you can see that they've dropped today just because of this. So it's interesting how those things can have an effect, but... Um, just some just some note to, is is the next meeting for the next report comes out. It usually comes out about the middle of each month. So the next report comes out July 11th. So, um, so yeah. See, you know, the goal is 2%. And you'll read that all over about, yep. you know, that's, they'll change the rates when it gets to 2%. But it hasn't been getting there. Well, that's the goal. But that doesn't necessarily mean when they're going to actually start lowering now, when we talk about interest rates, we're not talking about mortgage rates, they're separate. But when the Fed goes to lower interest rates, um, it's probably, it's more than likely going to be before we hit that 2% goal. That would be their ideal state is that we get to 2%, then they lower rates. But they have to be careful because if they keep rates higher, it puts pressure on the banks and you could have a lot of banking issues. So they've got to kind of balance the two. So we'll get into more about what they did here in the next couple of slides. So like I said, a direct correlation, um, if you can see there on the 30 year fixed rate or actually across the board, interest rates dropped almost a quarter of a point. That was just today. Yeah, right here. So as of um, today, we went under 7%, which um, doesn't sound the greatest, but we're happy about it because it's it's been since March 28th that we've been this low. So, you know, we've had a couple of months where we've been above seven or just, you know, right around this rate or above seven. So, um, and typically when you have a favorable uh, consumer price index report, which is an inflation report, or a, I would say, unfavorable uh, jobs report, mortgage rates will come down because it's the whole inflation thing. So it's kind of weird to think about, but they actually want more unemployment, um, again, to stop the spending. So those two things can cause mortgage rates to drop or they can cause them to go up, you know, based on whatever happens from those reports. You can see the fluctuation in that one day. Um, but they typically run in parallel or close to the same with a 10-year treasury yield. So if you follow that, which it gets a little bit further than I want to go, but if you follow that, that's typically how the mortgage rates go as well. So you know, I just want to say, looking at this chart, you know, you look at how low they were here mm -hmm. in that 20, it looks like half of 2020 is when they kind of dropped and then they hung there. Yeah. And look Under. at where we are now. I mean, you guys, this is a long ways away from even back here in 2016. How many years? It's 10 years or something. It's never been this low, right? Or is it, was it 30? 
Oh, the the low the down, down, down here. That's the like a historic low. That's a historic thirty year low. I think yeah. it was. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about this. The part about should you wait? I mean, come on, look at this chart. This chart helps me visually see. Should I wait? Ah, uh, no. It, you can see it's not going to dive down there. Yeah, and we'll get into more about what we're talking about in the next few slides. But basically, should you wait to buy or should you, or should you buy now? Is kind of the question. And yeah, most, we're going to talk about most that. investors are wanting to wait, and so we'll talk about um, what what that can mean for you. So again, going into another slide here, and this is kind of we're getting you know there's a couple more slides, and then we'll be through kind of this boring stuff in a sense. But this is the Federal Reserve rate cuts. So um, or rate hikes, I should say. I say cuts, but they haven't cut yet. So I, sorry, I said that wrong. <laughs> um, rate hikes. We're hoping that they cut, but they haven't cut yet. So as you can see, during the pandemic, you got 2020, 2021 down there. We were at basically 0% interest rates. Again, this isn't mortgage rates, but this is interest rates. And the Fed has been raising those rates over the course of 2022 and into 2023. And now what they've done is they've held steady. So they had a meeting today. And um, again, those meetings aren't every month. They're per periodically throughout the, throughout the year. And the meeting today, they held rates uh, where they're at again. So no change. So as you can see the line going across there, we've had 11 months since we've had last had a rate change, which was an increase. Uh, last one was back in July of last year. So the goal this year was to lower the rates and that hasn't happened. Um, there was forecasts from certain experts saying that they were giving 100% certainty by June 2024 <laughs> that the rates were going to lower. And now Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, is saying he might do one rate cut before the end of the year. And that's pretty much probably what we're going to see, where we were looking at two or three. And you're talking cuts. about these Federal Reserve rates, not the mortgage Correct, rates. Yes. But these rates set the mortgage yes, rate. This rate were to lower, you'd see mortgage rates go down. It's another kind of... Uh, correlation between the two but so, they're not they don't run exactly the same yeah we're watching different markers than you the average person would watch so okay one more thing here and then we get into more housing stuff which is probably more interesting but this is the unemployment rate the the you know national unemployment rate um it's sitting at four percent as of the last job report which was last friday and so it's up a tick from last month last month was at 3.9 it went to four um, really, the idea is it's kind of the opposite of what you think. The higher this goes up, the better it is, really. But it doesn't want to go too high. So you, you know, it's kind of this balance where you don't want to have a recession. You don't want to have tons of unemployment, but you want to have an uptick in unemployment. The Fed's goal when they announced this a long time ago was 4.5% they wanted this to be at. And, the, and the, so the unemployment rate has stayed really low over the course of other than that spike for COVID. You know, it recovered back pretty yeah, quickly, but that was, it that. was basically been, we've been at near historic lows for quite a while now and for the unemployment rate. And so that's what's kind of held this inflation number up to this, you know, kind of what the experts are saying as well. The next job report comes out on uh, July 5th. So again, that can have an effect. So if you're looking at mortgage rates, you see the job report come out on, on Friday the, the 5th, and if it's favorable, you tend to see that the rates will probably go down that day. You know, if it's not, it'll go up. Favorable would mean a little bit higher unemployment. I read something interesting about mortgage rates that, you know, when you're getting a new mortgage, you want to lock in. And when the rates were low, you wanted to, you know, lock in. They're saying people are pausing about the locking in now because, you know, if it's going to go down to 6.9, I'd rather have that than 7.15. You know right. what I'm saying? Any little bit counts. So what's the point of locking right now when they're, you know, almost the same anyway? Right, right. Okay, so now we'll transition into some more of uh, some things about housing and then some things about the, the housing market. So one of the things we look at all these different um, uh, statistics and data points one of the things that Leanne and I have experienced firsthand and have noticed throughout the market is that we've seen a fairly high uptick in price drops. Now, this is the this is basically the metro areas across Redfin's data. 
So this isn't just our Twin Cities market. If you're in New York or wherever you're at, this is basically any metro area. Um, as you can see, this goes back over the last three plus years, almost four years. And the yellow line there, that's this year, 2024. Um, right here. Compared to the blue line was 2023, the black line was 2022, and the um, orange line was 2021. So as you can see, the black line, how it went up very quickly like it did, that was because rates had gone up. So you can see that. But blue is more, a little bit more flat, kind of, you know, you see maybe seasonality sometimes in there, depending on what market you're in. And this is kind of a mix of all of it. So, but you can see in the yellow, it's gone up quite a bit. We're at 6.4%, um, you know, percentage of listings have had to have price drops uh, recently. So that's pretty significant. It's very significant seeing. for, you know, us as realtors, we see this. A, if we're listing it and we really try to get it priced right and it's not selling, we got to drop the price. This is huge what's going on right here in the price drops this year. It's it's high. You know, it's at the high of 2022 darn near right now. Um, and it it's alarming in a way, but it's great for someone if you're buying right now. Um, there's deals to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think we're, I think we're going to say more about that because I guess Eric and I, you know, you found a duplex deal recently and got way under what the price was. Yeah. That one, I think we got about 40,000 under asking price. Um, but yeah, I've had a few deals this year where we've gotten under asking price for the prop for, you know, at least what was listed at versus what we got it at. Um, so I think what's kind of driving this is that, you know, you've got aggressive pricing from, from listing agents. I think listing agents are going a little higher than, than they should. <laughs> um, but then the market and the rates are still sticking point for both buyers and sellers on this stuff. So yep. it's causing the market to just be kind of slow uh, in general, because you have a lot less buyers because of affordability issues with the rates and prices. And, uh, you know, we've noticed too, with some of the listings that we've had, buyers are pickier. Oh. They don't want to have to fix a whole lot of stuff. They want things that look really nice. And, you know, so yeah, but the next slide you'd think with the price drops, well, that means the prices are going down, right? Wrong. Uh, <laughs> prices are still going up. So um, again, this is like I said, if the price drops are happening, that means the pricing is being set much higher than it probably should be. Because right now we're seeing a 4% increase year over year in pricing. So even though we've got high interest rates, affordability issues, we have less buyers in the pool, we even have less sellers because if you have a house and you want to maybe upgrade, you're at 3% now, do you really want to sell and then buy something at seven? You know, probably not. So with all that still going on, you're still seeing a 4% increase year over year in prices. And this is kind of one of the sticking points for inflation too, is housing, both rental and pricey but yeah and this increase you know people keep thinking i'll wait and we're going to say more about that because you got to take into account these statistics i mean yeah you can wait but hey it's our prices are up so what are you waiting for well, them to go up more and we me, got we got a chart let me that. let me ask one question for everybody quick so if the rates if the rates go down, let's say they go down from seven percent to six to five, what do you what what's going to happen to the prices? Anybody have a clue? Put it in the chat. So if the rates go down, if they're at seven percent today, and in let's say six months, a year from now, they're down to six or even five, what's going to happen to prices? Do you think? I mean, again, we don't have a crystal ball, but what would you assume would happen to prices? I'll answer it if nobody answers here in a few seconds. Yeah, put it in the chat, somebody. Make a guess. So the answer, I won't wait any longer. The answer is probably the prices are going to go up, right? So if you have lower interest rates, that's typically, that's what, what we saw. You're going to have more demand, more buyers. You know, there's a, it stays the same. It's a good possibility. It's a possibility, but I would say that they're probably going to go up. If you have rates that go down to four, five, well, not four probably, but five or 6%, you're going to end up seeing more buyers rushing in 
and it's going to cause more the pricing to go up. And the reason I say that is because there are a lot of there are a lot of buyers right now that are sitting on the sidelines because either that it's, it's unaffordable, either they've been pushed out of the market because they they don't qualify anymore, or people are just waiting because the feeling is is well the rates are too high. I don't I want to wait until rates come down. So you're going to have a whole bunch of buyers that rush to the market when the rates go down, yep. especially if they get under six. Yep. You're going to have a ton of people hit the market, but you're not going to have enough housing to meet the demand. Yeah. In, re, so. you, don't forget, we're still in a way low inventory market because inventory can't get corrected quickly. And we've been low inventory for several yeah. years. Inventory is higher now because things are sitting longer. But yeah, it's but not, not to where it should be. It's not a right. balanced market by any means. No, not at all. So the next chart's going to kind of go into what we're talking about. So I talk to a lot of investors all the time and a lot of the questions that, you know, I ask them about, you know, are, you know, you want to invest now. I mean, I talk to a lot of people and the consensus that I get, even whether it's investors looking to buy or whether it's even a, a buyer, just a regular buyer looking to buy, the statements a lot of time I get is I want to wait until rates come down. And, um, what I want to talk about here and show in a little chart is what that looks like if you let if you wait. This so, is a good one. Yigi. So we'll go through this chart kind of step by step so you can understand it. So you go ahead hit hit. So on the on the column that says today, this is just a just a generic scenario. Let's say you're going to buy a house today and the property the price is three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now we just showed you the rates about seven percent. If you put twenty percent down, you'd be putting seventy thousand down on that house. And your payment for that, just principal and interest payment, we're not talking taxes and insurance, that's a whole other deal, would be $1,863. Now ignore the bottom part for a second and go over to the future. Okay. Let's say you decided, you know what, I don't want to buy today because it's going to be too expensive to buy. I'm going to wait until a year, two years when the rates go down. Well, whether the rates, you know, even with the rates going down, prices will go up, but typically even what we've seen is prices going up even without the rates going down. So kind of in this scenario, we're looking at, you know, it goes from 350 to 400. We both feel that's fairly conservative, seeing it might be a year or two before you even get to that five and a half percent rate. Plus, again, all those buyers are kind of flooding in. So 400 might actually be low, but let's just go with 400 for the future price. Same house we're the, talking about. Same house. It's yeah. just, it's, it's selling for more now. The rate's five and a half percent. Now to buy that house, you'd have to put 20% down. So you're at 80,000. And your payment would be 1817. So in this scenario, if you look in the bottom, you're going to save just $46 a month, but you're going to have paid $10,000 more in down payment. So what this is kind of showing you is by waiting, it doesn't really save you any money. It could potentially cost you even more, especially if that house goes up even higher in value. We were seeing, you know, in some markets, they were seeing crazy in um, you know, price increases, but um, you know, we, we saw 15, 20%, you know, year over year when the market was, was kind of a, a going crazy. And again, I'm looking at this as probably a year, maybe two years down the road before this happens. So you're going to have your regular appreciation. Plus you're going to have the increase of all the buyers flooding the market. So the scenario here is let's see you bought today. What advantages do you have of buying today versus waiting in the future? Well, the advantages are you're going to put less money down, right? You're, you're also going to have that equity gain. You're yes. going to gain equity over time. Plus, you're going to gain um, equity as far as pricing going up if rates go down, which like we talked about, will push prices up. Plus, you have the ability now, if you bought today that the person at in the future doesn't have, is you could say, okay, great. Now in the future, the rates are at 5.5%. I can now refinance my loan. And so if you hit the button, you can see what it would look like if you refinanced your loan and refinancing at five and a half percent on that original loan would put you at a payment of 1590. So kind of what we talk about, and I don't know if you guys have heard it before, but people say about, you know, you want to marry, marry the, the um, house and you want to date the rate. So that's kind of the idea here. Now there's no crystal ball. Well, could rates go higher than 7%? Yeah, they could, but most of the consensus experts, unless there's some catastrophic event that happened, are saying rates are going to go down some point here soon. Whether that's this year, next year, we don't know. But the 
the cost of weeding could cost you, especially if it's a rental property. I mean, if you can get it at 1600 from down from 1800 that's an extra $200 a month in cash flow you're going to put in your pocket. Um, and that's not even counting paying down the loan at all. I didn't even do that. I didn't factor that because I don't know what the future, I don't know when future is going to happen. You know, again, it might be a year or two years. So it's probably going to be even a lower payment than that unless you pull money out of the refi. Now, so, did this explain, I mean, I love this chart because it really, so many, everybody asks us this question. Should I wait? Should I wait? Should I wait? And this really shows you what, what are you waiting for? Particularly on investment property, you're ahead if you get it now. But even if you're going to move into it, yeah. yeah and I don't, I don't even get the question. I just am told I'm going to wait because the market's not good. Yeah. So, but the, we're trying to, it, it really is good. And there's deals out there, you know, people, a lot of times people, that's what they tell me. Oh, there's no good deals out there. That's not true. They are out there, but you really need to work with professional people that understand how to find them and the numbers around it. Like what is the difference between a good and a bad deal? It's critical information, right? Even if you're going to go live in it. You need to understand things like this chart. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about that, uh, you know, we, we were talking yesterday about how it's a golden opportunity potentially for buyers to buy right now. Um, and you might be thinking, well, that's crazy. It doesn't seem like it. Well, you don't want to buy. You don't want to be buying when everybody else is buying. Rates go down. All these buyers are going to flood to the market. Remember what happened? I don't know if people know, but Two years ago, two and a half years ago, when the rates were lower, we were trying to, I was trying to get properties for buyers and it was a nightmare. Yeah. Everyone had 15, 10, 20 offers. 15, yeah. 20 offers. I think I had one house that had 50 offers on it. It went for 50,000 over asking price. And this thing was not good. It should never have gone that high. So you don't want to really be in that situation. The situation we have right now, there's less competition. There's hardly any, uh, not hardly, but there's not as many buyers out there. And there's a lot more opportunity to be able to get a property. Um, you can get inspections. Back then, you couldn't do inspections. You couldn't, you know, you're, you're basically giving everything to the seller. Now you have a little bit more flexibility where you can get inspections. You can potentially get price discounts. Like we said, there's price drops happening. You can potentially get the price lower than what the seller is looking to get for it. So maybe you can get them to fix things you find on the inspection possibly. where you couldn't in a tight market, you got to give up that stuff as a buyer. Yep. Yep. Um, there, that second one, there's more contingencies. Uh, there's, you know, if you have a house for sale and it hasn't sold, you can still find a new house, but it's contingent on the sale of the first house. I had a deal last week with, I was the listing agent and it had three offers and every single one had a contingency on selling a different house. Mm -hmm. What yeah, is, you're seeing that a lot more now where there's contingencies on selling houses where you, you hardly saw that a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, but now that's the, you know, the person who's shy of, I got to find the new house before, you know, I got to find the new house, but I got to sell this to pay for the new house. The other thing we didn't even mention in here is especially if you're doing, if you're buying your own house or if you're doing a house hack, if it gets it to your primary residence, there is a ton, especially in the state of Minnesota, oh. of a down payment assistance programs available for you to get into properties. Now you got to qualify and in income levels and all that, but something to definitely look into, especially if you're going to house hack or buy your own, own property that you're going to live in. Yes, there's affordability products. Minnesota has that genera generational. First generation. Yeah. yeah, first generation. If your parents didn't own a house, and you're the first one buying. There's it's upwards of forty thousand. Yeah, forty grand. You and you can, can stack these programs too, so you could have forty, fifty, sixty, depending on how many you're qualified for and how many you can stack. And there are only there's only so much funding though too. So if you're looking at it, take advantage of it. You know as soon fast. as possible because you know as soon as the funding is up, then okay, that program's not available. So kind of a thing. But um, so yeah, that's. Uh, and then, like you said, we can buy cheaper now versus waiting. Again, I showed you the, the graph. And like I said, all those buyers come in, marry the rate, marry the house, I should say, and date the rate. And we talked about potential for future equity and, and cash flow gains. The other thing, too, is if you live in the Twin Cities here, we have a very strong rental market here. 
Um, there's statistics showing that our rental market has gained while others have gone down. So, and I just the whole Midwest belt is like that. It's pretty safe investing in that sense, the strong rental market. And I read that just here in the Twin Cities today in finance and commerce, the uh, multifamily permits are down. That that effect won't be felt, you know, till next year or on. But what that does is cause an even stronger rental market. That's good news. If you've got investment property, you better be optimizing it. So now we're going to get into a little bit about who we are and how we can potentially help you and, and why why our team with the on for investment team is a little unique. So that's our team right there, myself and Leanne, and we also have Ryan. So kind of the first thing we talk about here is as far as having the team, the team is really important. It is. As a team, what's really great is we get to have a life. I, I have to say that because, you know, you, you folks... Like I said, if the right house comes on, somebody has got to get out there and show it to you immediately. And you might have to, you know, skip your baseball game or what it, it happens like that if you really want to buy the right thing. But that's why it's great with all three of us. We we can take we can help each other out. If one's on vacation, the other one will take care of it. That's what I love about a team. It also we learn faster because we all learn from each other. We have different skills. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Yep, and we collaborate and yeah, we together. collaborate. We we help each other, you know, showings and all that. And it's just makes you have access to three people's knowledge, and not just one. So that's cool. I'm trying to get to the next slide, and it's not going. Like stuck there. Whoops. Oops. Not too far. Okay. There we go. Okay, remember, we're a team of investment property realtors. That doesn't mean we don't sell your personal home or help people buy their first home or second or whatever. But we have also on top of that, the investment property experience. And that is humongous, you guys. Less than 1% of realtors even understand or are qualified to sell investment property. They, they haven't learned it. So we have investment expertise, all three of us, and we're this is this part is about me. You know, I'm a national coach and a trainer. I invented the proven profit formula because I built a $14 million portfolio with my then husband. And I'm a coach and a trainer, and I help people all over the United States learn how to start or scale a portfolio with my coaching program. And what really, what you need to do as an investor, because you need to have some training. That's what I provide from profit formula training and tools. I give you tools. Then you acquire a piece of property. Most everybody in the program in 90 days, they're acquiring property. But then I teach you how to optimize and scale it. And I see a lot of investors make mistakes there because you're not charging the right rent or you haven't added the dishwasher, or there's so many tools and ways to optimize and get the most money out of your property, and then how to scale. And really what it's about is buying and appreciating areas. That's super important. And really the goal or the why of most of the people is generational wealth, you know, provide a legacy for your kids, retirement for yourself, all of that. That's what I teach people is, you know, how to get this going so you can get to that quicker. And what I have here is we ha I have lowered the price of my program like you can't believe. This is the lowest I've ever sold it. But I have a special pricing right now. The This is called the Proven Profit Formula Starter Program. And then I have a higher ticket accelerator program if you want some more personal coaching. But this is regularly $9.97. And right now we have it for $5.97. And it's never, ever, ever been this low. And you get with that seven weeks of coaching, okay? And you can scan that code right here in the PowerPoint or can you put that in the chat over here? Yeah. We're going to have, oh, I took it away. I can't because you got the mouse. Oh, I got the mouse. 
to get give you the mouse. I'm going to do it real quick. Oh, no, look at I can't. Grab no, you it. can't grab it. No, I can't. Okay, we'll put it in the chat at the end. Yeah. Okay. Because you can actually, you can go to my website, leannereilly.com, and you can find it. No. Nope. It's, it's a not. landing page. It's you got to scan page. it. We'll put so it in go the to, chat. Go to leannereilly.com, PPF, RG special. There so you go. That's yep. Pretty simple. All right. And then um, that's a, includes seven weeks of group coaching with me. And here's the other thing about our team. You tell this one. Yeah. So one of the things that me and I do a lot of is we look for deals. We have our clients that we work exclusively with. And, um, you know, every day, this is what kind of is different than us than a normal agent. Uh, I've even had investors say this to me where, you know, hey, I, I like working with you because you send me deals. Most of the other agents, they just put me on a search and wait for me to say, hey, I want to look at this one. What we do is I'll go through and Leanne will as well as we'll look through and 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 search the MLS um, and see what properties out there would potentially work for that investor for their, you know, whatever their situation is. You know, maybe they're house hacking, maybe they're buying and hold, maybe they're burr, maybe they're fix and flip. We're going to look at the properties in their search to see what properties might work for them and then basically send them an email alerting them. They can see it themselves as well, but this is just kind of a, hey, what about this property? And typically when I'm looking at that, I'm looking at what is that investor wanting? And do they want a couple hundred dollars in cash flow or what are they looking for? And I'm finding and gearing properties for that. And that, especially if you're a newer investor, that's very helpful because you might not know what you're even looking at. You're like, I don't know, is this a good deal? Is this not a good deal? Well, I like the way this house looks. Well, as an investor, that's <laughs> that's nice. But if the numbers don't work, it doesn't really matter how nice the house looks. Because it might be, you know, for sale for way more than than will work for the numbers. You'd be negative six hundred dollars a month in cash flow. But hey, it looks nice. You don't want that. You want to be in a situation where, you know, you 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 know you're confident about what the rents are going to be because we've already done the research for you. We've already established kind of where you're going to be and and digging up those deals. And I also personally do some um, direct calling to sellers myself to try to dig up deals for you. So working with us and our team. Uh, exclusively gets you the ability to have us dig up the deal for you. And a lot of realtors, another place we have experience is in wholesale deals. We have connections yep. and we get fed deals. And if we know you're looking for a fix and flip, they're not, they're not as easy to find these days. Um, but we, we know of people who have them. Okay, so and as realtors, a lot of realtors don't understand that part of the the quotient and how we can facilitate those deals too. Mm -hmm. So we we help you dig it up. We keep track of what it is you're looking for, and we we look we we look for you. So why another reason why we're unique, and this is Ryan on our team. We have a fix up program. You know he has done a lot of wholesale and fix up deals. He owns investment property and we can help you with like the getting, especially say you have a grandma house or you, you know, you need to do something to juice it up to sell it for more money. We can help you do that. We call it flip your home and make more money. And Ryan does construction project management on rehabs. So we added him to the team because that was a piece that many investors said, gosh, I would buy this house, but I don't know the contractors. I don't know what to do. And he's done all that, has a crew of people who can do it all. And that is an advantage. You can maybe buy an investment property that you wouldn't have known how to, and you can get that bid right on the front end. Or if you're looking at selling your home and your home needs some uh, updating and repairs, you know, we can have him come in and do those repairs and then sell your house for even more than the repairs cost. So you can make even more money from your own home. And that's a critical one right now, because in, in this market right now, why you're seeing some lagging inventory and those price drops, part of it is people want the darn house done mm -hmm. and when it needs work then they're like oh, i want to find one that's done and we've seen that lately things that need work they linger on the market and the price starts going down unless they're priced really low yeah 
yeah and and i'll tell you about that here i'm gonna let's finish the slideshow and then we're gonna answer a whole ton of questions so you can get a free strategy session with me or eric or ryan and to schedule you just go over to the leanne riley no you go over to onpartinvestmentteam.com and it'll take you right to the place where you can schedule this free strategy session it's usually 45 minutes and what we do is this is how we get to know what your needs are, what you're looking for. This is how we decide if we're going to work together. Yes. If you're looking for a, a real estate agent that knows investment properties and you want to work with one, that's where you go. Yep. And then we we do these on Zoom too. So you can be in New York or wherever. You know, we have an agent finder program if you're out of the state, because here's the other thing. We're investment property realtors. I can vet them in a minute to figure out if who would be the right fit. And that helps a lot. It, you know, if you are an investor and you're in some market that you don't live in, you need the right realtor or it's going to be really tough. Oh, okay. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to go back to stop sharing. And here we are again. Okay. So. We are ready for questions. Does anybody have any market questions? Because we're right here with you to answer them. So put it in the chat box. Okay, did we forget anything while they're doing that? I don't think so. I was coming up with a question for you. Come on, somebody must have a question here. We couldn't have answered it all. Okay, I'll tell you about, you know, as a realtor, pricing is critical too. So I had a townhome in Eden Prairie that needed some fixing on the market a couple of weeks ago over Memorial Day weekend. And I intentionally priced it low enough so that I would get a lot of attention and people there because for the seller, we need bodies coming and looking at it and find the right investor who wanted to buy it, right? Somebody who was willing to do some fix up. It wasn't a lot, but it was there. And what I have, 30 showings the first day. There was practically a brawl in the front yard on the second day. I think I had 13 offers by the end of the weekend. So obviously it's under contract now. And we just got to wait for the closing date. But that one, that took some knowledge of the market and a certain methodology that we use to get that to happen. And pricing is a big piece of it. And then, you know, open house, all the different things that we do with that. And like I said, people were running to look at that house. And those were the smart investors that were, you know, I had people call when it was already multiple offers and highest and best. Can we go look at it tomorrow? No, you missed the window. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's rare. We're not seeing a lot of that where there's multiple offers like that on a property. So, but I said that with, but, well, I, you know, you I set that at a price I that, set it up that happened. Right. And if you have a beautiful house, even if it's expensive, boy, you got a stage, you know, if it's like I say, turnkey ready, that makes a big difference. Now, if you're an investor, you probably want something that needs a little fixing. A lot of times people do because that then you can add that value while you're doing the fixing, you know, repainting, recarpeting, whatever it is. There's easy fixes and hard fixes. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a question. <laughs> I know one thing that we we haven't really heard too much anymore, but well, I mean, it does come up is people wonder about whether or not there'll be a market crash. You know, are we going to see markets, you know, the market where the prices go down significantly? I think we kind of answered that with what we talked about. You know, if the consensus is that at some point in the near future, rates are going to go down, you know, it doesn't look like we'll have any kind of a market crash based on that. Now there's, you know, outside events could affect that, but we can't predict that. Um, so, but it's been lingering as far as when those rates are going down. We've been hearing reports of rates are going to go down, 
last no, two years ago. I think we were hearing rates are going to drop at the end of 2022 and then 2023 and now it's 2024. And um, so this inflation has been, you know, obviously hanging around very long and been very difficult for everybody. Um, but it's definitely, um, you know, it's, it, it, we're in a situation where I don't think you're going to see those those prices drop in 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 the industry because of the, all these people sitting back waiting right now in the housing market. So, yeah. What else have we seen out there lately? Um, trying to think, what other deal did I? I do have a lingering property on the market and. It needs a little bit of fix up is I think what's causing a lot of the problem. Oh, I know. Here's another issue, folks. If you're townhome or condo buyers, the insurance rates tied to hurricanes, tornadoes, whatever. There was a condo 300 unit building in Florida that, you know, fell off the rails and a bunch of people got killed. That has raised insurance rates. We all know in our cars and our housing insurance is up, but particularly for HOAs, the the um, association running the townhouse or the condo complex, rates are way, way up. And that's part of what is holding this listing up. The dues per month with the insurance and the association dues are over $800 a month. And that's getting steep it's making it a problem so you're going to see that universally though this insurance increase it's happening to everybody's homeowners car mm -hmm. all that mm -hmm. and um those are related to national stuff even though it's in your region happen i mean that hurricane in florida gets spread across insurance across the u.s right. yeah. yeah it's not just because it's down there Bill wants to know, do you help with funding deals? Personally, us? No, but we know hard money lenders or, you know, that private money or hard money lenders or banks, or there's more and more um, financing possibilities. Like there's something called a DSCR loan, particularly on a rental or something. It's based on that property and its numbers, not so much on your personal credit and you. It's based on what you're buying. The rates are higher, folks. What are they? Gosh, the, you can be up to 9% and the down payment, they're going to nail you on that up to 30% probably. You know. Or you can get DSCR loans for 15% down, but the rates are 9%. Yeah, the rates. So. So see, there's trade-offs these days, but it's still some, it can work for the right piece of property. Yeah. One question I was thinking of that we get a lot of is, is, and you know, we can both answer this, but I can let you go first is, so with rates being higher, insurance is higher, taxes is higher, yada, yada, yada. How do you find a good deal? How do you make, because it seems like the numbers don't really work in a lot of deals. And how do you really find a good deal out there? What are some tips or tricks that maybe could help with that. Do you have any ideas? Tips or, well, one of the things you need a tool, some sort of a tool and that we have developed the cash flow analysis tool, which is just a quick spreadsheet, but it helps punch the numbers real quick. So we can look at a property and think, oh, this could be good. Punch it in there. And in a minute or two, we know if we should think about it any further or if it's dead. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. We saved a whole bunch of time there and money because some people will, especially first time investors, you don't quite have the education or knowledge. So you go a little bit about it's pretty or we can fix this couple of things, but you got to, there's so many, which strategy do you want to do? Who's, are somebody managing it? You got to counter that expense there. When you buy a house, let's say somebody owned it for 15 years, it's, you know, the taxes are going to go up. They won't go up the first year, but they will go up sizably. You better factor that in. And people forget all of these things. When we put the numbers on our spreadsheet, we know that automatically. And we have formulas in there that will automatically raise 
like the insurance or the taxes mm -hmm. because it's going to happen and you better plan for it. So that's really the big thing is you got to know the difference between a good deal and a bad deal. And a good realtor can help in a lot of ways. Some will, some won't. Some don't know the difference either. And they're more interested in just selling the house mm -hmm. and getting you into something. But it, it's different if you're going to move in yourself. There might be certain things you want in the kitchen or the, you know, they're, that's different. That's much more emotional because you're going to live there and you want the right house. But when it comes to investment property, it, it you, yeah, you don't have, it's not about the granite countertops. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would also add too is, is that, you know, when we talk about digging for deals, some of what we do too, is we look at and find opportunities. So there might be a property where maybe you can add another bedroom um, in the basement or, you know, different value add, you can add a dishwasher that can help your rents go up. And there's different, different value add opportunities where you might, you know, not need, you know, it, it might be priced low enough where you can do some cosmetic work and, you know, it's not 13 offer kind of a situation, but you can get a property where you can put a little cosmetic work in and then get the rents up um, or different, just different opportunities like that. So there's, there's things like that that you can look for in a prop in a, you know, in a property that maybe somebody else isn't noticing, or maybe the rents are low and you know that and you be careful with St. Paul and won't get into rent control and all that, but you gotta, you know, if you see that there's a property out there and the rents are are low, or maybe the, you know, the rents are low, but both tenants are going to move out in a couple months. Well, there's an opportunity there where you could potentially then have, you know, either they want to stay or whatever, but you can have it so you could raise the rents to more market rents, and now all of a sudden the deal works where it didn't before at the current rents and things like that. And then even so, you know, maybe moving or uh, looking a little further away from the metro. Um, and getting a little further away, rents drop a little bit, but not too much, but pricing drops a little bit more. So the numbers start to work a little bit better. Yeah. You, There's a couple of different strategies. You just do. sold that duplex in a small mm -hmm. town for really reasonable. Yeah. It's going to get probably four or $500 a month in cash flow. Yeah. It was like $140,000 duplex. So, I mean... You know, that's in today's market, folks. That's in today's market. Yeah, it's, and it it's didn't a small need town. it didn't need a bunch of work either. It needed a little bit of work, a little but bit, but not, you know, not a gut rehab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope, yeah, and that's and that's cheap. So I mean, just looking for different opportunities. So just just because you initially see the price and you see it's you know whatever the price is and there's so many bedrooms is and you look at it and go, oh, that's not going to work. That's not going to rent for enough. What are the underlying opportunities there potentially that could make that deal work? Not every deal is going to have that. It's kind of, you know, a little bit of a needle in a haystack, but there are, they are out there. So yeah. it's finding those opportunities. In any market, they're out there. And a lot of it is the opportunities and who you know and how we network together. William asked one more question. Do, do, do we organize syndication? No, but I know syndicators. And if you don't know what syndication is, that's where um, a general manager or general partner will put together a group of people. Maybe everybody puts in 100000 and they might buy a 50-unit apartment building or 300-unit apartment building in a different city. So you're an investor. You're throwing in some money. Someone else is doing all the work and you're getting a percentage return. I did talk to a syndicator yesterday. I did a live stream for on investing for a bunch of realtors and there was a syndicator on there and a, a fix and flipper and me were the guests. And yeah, that guy said he's getting over 20% returns, the syndicator, but he's not buying multifamily apartments. You know what he's doing? He's a development syndicator. He buys land and then he'll put up the 30 townhomes or whatever. There's a lot more spread in something like that than if you bought an existing apartment building and you're going to like, you know, juice it up. So it, that's a whole different science. That's a sophisticated investor. And the main thing I'd say about syndication, know who your partners are, you know, really, really dig deep on where you're putting that kind of money. And it's a long play. It's you don't cash out of those quick at any means. And, you know, that's the thing about real estate too, right? You got to buy the right house 
that you can't turn this in tomorrow like some stock, you know, oh, I don't want to buy that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It takes a while, you know, to sell a house and all of that. And it's expensive. And so you really got to get the right one. And I've seen investors buy the wrong one for the first one. And then they think they can't do it. And sometimes those are who my students are. They screwed up. It might have been 10 years ago. And you got to let that go and start fresh again with the right knowledge. And then you can make it successful. Hey, I built that portfolio when the interest rates were 18%. But luckily, my brother taught me the cash flow formula. And I didn't even, it doesn't matter what the rates are if, if the numbers work. But in that scenario, you buy 18%. And if you have the numbers work, you're sitting in a golden, op gold, I golden was, opportunity I, yeah. for rates eventually start coming down and now you can refinance and get you but your cash flow goes way up after that they did and that's exactly what we did we refied so you refi and pull money out yep pull guys, money out buy more buy more yep that's that the opportunity i think that's there with you know buying a house right now and then in a year or two from now if rates go down and prices go up then you're sitting in a situation where you can refi pull money out and continue to leverage that moving forward yeah, just like your chart showed, the payment went to 15-something instead of 18-something right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? We're going to wrap it up. What do I have to say at the end here? Let's see. Just always you can find us at leannereilly.com and dig around on my website, the coaching, the real YouTube estate channel. arm, the YouTube channel. We have a Facebook group, too. Uh, real estate investing made simple mm -hmm. so join that as well or the youtube page is leanne riley real estate so there's a lot of information a lot of videos like this that are over there with experts in the industry that you can get a lot of education from so so thanks for joining us today and we'll see you next month because we do these every month yep take care bye